What's up guys? Everyone that watches this webinar, I have several free gifts for you at the end of the webinar. So you have to watch from the beginning to the end, but you will get these free gifts and you're gonna love them. You're gonna love them. So with that, let's get into the webinar. Hi there, my name is Glendon Cameron and I'm about to give you this webinar to explain to you why you should subscribe to Savage Finance. First of all, it's my life story. Back there, that's $200,000 worth of cars. And it wasn't always like that in my life. I remember being homeless. I remember being dirt poor. I grew up in Alabama in what's called a shotgun shack. There were no hallways in their house. It was just, you went from room to room, there were no hallways. And I remember growing up, getting out of bed, going through the kitchen, through the back door to use the outhouse. And at that point, I didn't understand that we were poor. That was just how it was. And I went to school, you know, we, we took baths, we were cleaning everything. But I grew up really poor and it didn't really start to hit until about middle school when Adamsville Elementary fed into Bottenfield. And we started to, I started to see that these kids were not like me and my friends. They actually had money, their parents had money. And that was my first financial lesson about the differences between people with money and people who don't have money. So if you're like me, no one ever sat you down and said, this is how you should handle money. And I grew up and I was making a whole bunch of mistakes. I uh, remember I grew up pretty poor and then I went to the military where, which was my first time in life actually consistently having money. And I remember when I bought my first car, which I financed, and I went from always having the money to my money got tight because my car payment was 250 and my car insurance was like 250. And I was an E4 in the military making about, I think 1400 before taxes. So the car payment and the car insurance and the gas literally took up half of my check. But once again, I was just out here figuring stuff out then I got married, we had children, and I found not one, not two, but three jobs. And I was a hardworking man. I was really proud. I, I grew up, you know, being from Alabama, uh, a man supposed to go to work for his family. And I went to work for my family. And I remember there was a two year period where I worked seven days a week, did not miss a day, did not have a sick day. And I noticed that even though I had three jobs, my financial life wasn't getting remarkably better. It just wasn't. And maybe you have found this out too, that you've picked up a part-time job and you're not really making any more money or it's just getting a little bit marginally better. So I go through a horrible divorce and I end up homeless. And this is where this story really begins. The first 18 months, I was in a homeless to living into destitute situations. If you don't know what a boarding house is, uh, I'm gonna explain it to you. A boarding house is a house where a bunch of people who don't know each other live. <laughs> I was in a boarding house with drug dealers, crack addicts, crack, not the best group of folks you wanna call friends. And I was in that situation for about 18 months. I uh, wrecked my car, I lost my job. I was in a really bad financial situation. Very, very bad financial situation. My credit was trash. Anything that you could think of that can happen. And even before that, I wasn't practicing good financial habits. I went to the pawn shop, pawn, you know, CDs and DVDs back in the day. For you kids who never heard of these things, you used to be able to take those to the pawn shop and get money. So I was doing pawn shops, I was doing errands rent to own, uh, I was doing 
car my that car that I financed in the military, I actually got it paid off and I pawned the title. I was doing title pawn. Out any bad financial mistake that you can think a person could do, I did it. <laughs> I was doing it. And I one of the reasons that I ended up homeless, and this is a big, big uh, proponent of this channel, is having a savings account, an emergency fund. And one of the reasons that I ended up homeless is I did not have an emergency fund. Even though at one point I was working three jobs, seven days a week, I did not have any savings, none. And when I fell, I fell hard. And I was about 18 months, I was in the house, living in that boarding house because at first I was homeless. I was living in my car. I had a gym membership. This is when I still had a job. Once I lost a car because I wrecked it on a rainy day, I actually ran into someone and oh yeah, it gets even worse. I didn't even have car insurance. So I get in the car accident. I wrecked my car. I don't have car insurance and I go from having a car to about maybe almost a three year period where I didn't have a car. So that really, really sucked. So when the information that I'm giving you in Savage Finance is rooted in living a very bad financial life, living really foul. I was living financially foul. And here's the thing, I didn't understand I was living that way. No one ever sat me down and said, look, young man, this is how you handle money. This is how you invest money. This is how you manage money in life. No one ever told me this. I had to figure all this stuff out by myself. So about 18 months, I was in the boarding house and I come across this dude named Earl Nightingale. Changed my life. And I, you know, cause I had tried to start businesses before, but I didn't know what I was doing. I had no clue. I had no really good information. So Earl Nightingale, that's a, a you should get it earl nightingale i think it's here free on youtube and then there's uh lead to feel earl nightingale and then there is the power of your subconscious mind another book that was a game changer and tony robbins unlimited power those were my textbooks to begin building the life that i have now because long long time ago i was homeless this was nothing in recent years and I was at the age of 32 when I fell into these hard times, being homeless, living in the boarding house. And age 34, I started my first business. And this is where the story gets good because I was living in a boarding house, right? And I, I, I got laid off because essentially when I lost my job, lost my car, I lost my job. So I had to take all of these temporary jobs. There's this place called Labor Pool and Labor Ready. Essentially what you do is show up at five o'clock in the morning and they send you out on these jobs and you get daily pay. So this is one of the things that they had set up and I was doing. So then I get this, I get smart and I go to a temp agency and I get this job at World's at Voice Stream, which is now T-Mobile. And I was selling phones and it, you know, was the most money I ever made while I was in this situation. Then I get laid off after being salesman of the month. So at this point, I had been listening to Earl Nightingale. I had been listening to um, The Power of Subconscious Mind. And I remember the guy brought me into the office and he said, uh, hey, I can get you probably two more weeks. And I was like, nah, I'll go home and I'll figure it out. And that was the first time that I actually conceived a plan. So I went home and I went to monster.com and I wrote up five resumes. And this is, this is genius. Some people will call it uh, unethical, but I don't. I created my own reference. I created Mr. Patel and this was before cell phones became ubiquitous. So I actually had a pager that would ring me on the hip whenever someone called that voicemail. And I went on interviews with rent crate and I went on three interviews. And then one day after I got my offer letter, that pager went off and I had to go get on a pay phone, call them back and they asked me two questions. Did he work for you and would you hire him again? And that was my reference check. So 
that is the beginning of my financial life because one of the things I talk about on Savage Finance is not quitting your job. I know that you are being bombarded, hit over the head with these things you can get and you can instantly quit your job. That's not the path that I took and that's not the path that I teach. One of the things I want you guys to understand is you gotta make more money and we're gonna get into that. So I got the job at Rent-A-Crate. It was uh, $38,000, 500 bucks uh, a year. Most money that I ever made in my life. Then I was there a few months, then I got an even better job making $62,000 a year. And then left, the, stayed there a few months, and then I went to an even better job where I was making six figures. And what I learned is it is easier to manage more money than less. When you don't have a lot of money, which is roughly 60, 70% of the country, it's hard to manage money. And what I've learned is when I made more money, it was easier to manage. And this is one of the fundamental principles on Savage Finance, make more money. So it really gets good because I had my job where I was making six figures. I was selling office furniture here in Atlanta. And then I had this opportunity that I took to the owner of the company that I was working for. And he said, now nah, pass that up. So this is where I created my first LL, my second LLC. And I had an LLC because I was an independent, uh, I was a commission salesperson. I wasn't quote an employee. So I took that second LLC and I entered into a contractual, we had a written contract while I was selling the furniture. Because this is the story. I, was, I approached them to sell them new office furniture. And they said, we have all this used office furniture. If you can help, help us sell this used office furniture, we will buy new office furniture from you. So essentially, I actually sold their office furniture, kept my job, kept my job. And then I quit my job. Then one day I go to the ATM before everyone had a Visa debit card. It was just an ATM card. I put my ATM card in there and I took out a hundred bucks and I saw the balance was $200,000. This literally happened without me being aware of it because I was selling this office furniture. I was still working my job and this is one of the things, this is income acceleration. This is another principle of Savage Finance. Because essentially, uh, many of you are watching the budgeting YouTube channels and you should, these budgeting YouTubers are putting out a lot of good content. They're doing an amazing job. And that is the first step. You need to have a budget. You need to manage your money. But the third thing that virtually no one actually talks about is making more money. And this is the this is the root this is the roots and the foundations of savage finance. You need to make more money. You need to go ahead and build yourself and make more money. Now, here's some numbers for you. Do you know that 50% of the American working population there supposedly before the pandemic? I don't know what the numbers are, but before the pandemic, there was 160 million people working. And out those 160 million, 80 million made $33,000 a year or less. And then when you moved it up to 60,000, 75% of the country made less than 60,000. With the average rent being 1,500, the average car payment being 550, you see where I'm going. Essentially, if you're in that 30 something thousand dollar per year range, it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility. One mishap, one illness, your financial snapshot is devastated. So this is why I strongly urge you to make more money. And I push and I prod and I talk about this because these are the lessons that I learned in my economic journey. So I started that, after that first business is then I started my second business, which didn't go that well. I started selling new furniture and uh, I sold $1.5 million worth of new furniture. That was the gross revenue. However, I made a lot of mistakes, did a lot of things wrong. And at the end of the year, I only made like $38,000 profit. And I was really disgusted because I did not sell 1.5 million of used office furniture and I made well over 200 K. I'm like, let's find some used stuff. And this is how I got into the storage auction business. I went around, I was like, 
how can I get a bunch of used stuff? Because the profit margins are amazing in used stuff. So I got in the storage auction business and fortunately for me, when I went out there, I had some money and I did not start my business with zero dollars. I did not get in the storage auction business broke. I had a lot of money in the bank when I got in the storage auction business, but because I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't go out there reckless and just spending and spending. I learned the lay of the game. So when it came time for me to spend that big bread, I was in the position to spend it. So one of the things I want you guys to understand, you should watch the budgeting videos. You should watch the investing videos, but you should also subscribe to Savage Finance so you can learn how to make more money. Now, the third job was very pivotal in my success today because that's where I learned about LLCs and holding companies. And when I got into business, this is when I really learned the game. Like you can watch all the YouTube videos, you can read all the books, but until you start playing the game, you're not going to learn these lessons. You're just not. So I rented a warehouse and this is where I got the trust game. For those of you enrolled in the corporate toolbox, we're going to be talking about trust a little later this year. But one of the things that I learned was financial strategies from being in business from other business owners. Now, once again, at no point in this video or this webinar, am I going to urge you to go out and quit your job to chase your dream? You want to know why? I was homeless. You know what happens once you let your income go? Financial devastation. I mean, it's just ugly. It's just sad. I actually lost teeth during that period of time in my life. It was very brutal and I would never push or put out a product or offering to urge you to quit your job, to go off and start a business because this is one of the things. And I want you to take it from me, someone who started several businesses. In the beginning, it's going to be rough most of the time. It's going to be rough. So in the beginning, you quit your job, you start this business, and you don't really make enough money to support you and the business. What's gonna happen? You're gonna go out of business. So I'm not gonna tell you that. One of the things that I advise you to do is to start your business when you have a job, to start your business when you have good credit, to start your business when you're in a good financial position, when you have money in the bank, when you have income coming in, and this is where the do more principle comes from. Because essentially, I know you guys are hit over the head with these YouTube ads that are telling you that you can make all this money, you could be on vacation, you could do it part time, you don't have to do X, Y, and Z, you don't have to do any of this stuff, you're hit over the head with it. And as a seasoned 20 year business person, entrepreneur, I'm here to tell you, for most of you, if you quit your job and start a business, it's not going to go well. It's just not going to go well unless you are married and your husband or wife has a job while you work on this thing. So my advice to you is to start your business while you have a job. That's what I did. I don't know anything about quitting my job and starting a business. I don't know about that because essentially what happened was my workload increased. I went from working 40 something hours a week to working 60 hours a week and it was well worth it. So this is where the do more principle comes from. Because I know that you're hit every day with you can make all of this money, you don't have to work full time, you don't have to get customers, you don't have to do all of the business stuff, stuff that has made people billionaires. Creating businesses, look at Jeff Bezos. What did Jeff Bezos do? With Amazon.com, he created a business. What did he do? He had an email list. What did he do? He, he got customers. What did he do? He built a website. He did all of the things that they're telling you that you don't have to do. And I'm here to say it's a little whack. It's a little whack because one of the things, uh, you know, you subscribe to Savage Finance. I'm never going to lie to you. I'm not going to blow smoke up your booty and tell you it's perfume. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give you the real factual things of the things that you need to do to make money, the things that you need to do. And also, let's go ahead and have this out here as a disclaimer. You start your business today, you're looking at a two to three year journey. 
for your business gets to the point where it throws off enough cash for you to quit your job. And this is something that I've been really honest about on my main channel for years and years and years. And a lot of people are starting to buy into that message because right now we have uh, Wall Street bets, GameStop, Airbnb, not Airbnb, but AMC, um, Bed Bath & Beyond, and people are playing the shorting of the stock game. Well, let me go ahead and tell you something. Many of those folks who made money through these uh, stock option trading strategies, most of those folks who made money are gonna be right back where they were in a few weeks, few months, or a few years. You wanna know why? Because no one is really pushing, other than Dave Ramsey, financial literacy, financial foundations, and financial responsibility. See, did you know that 70% of the people who win the lottery end up broke or file in bankruptcy? And these people win millions of dollars. Do you know that most of the NFL, NBA, ML, Major League Baseball players go broke short after retirement because they don't have good money habits? They just don't. They spend and they spend and they spend and they spend. Like right now, you know, I got $50,000 in my personal bank account. That's not the corporate bank account. That's money that I've paid myself this year. That's money that taxes have been paid on. And I'm not saying that to brag or to boast. I'm just showing you the power of a business. Business got me that back there. A business got me this million dollar house. Because another thing, there's many of you who like to watch the investing channels. Investing is cool. Investing is something you should do. However, investing compared to business income is way slow. I bought these two cars last year. I spent 200K in a month and I had that money back within 30 days. Name, please, 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 please. Name one investment where you can make $200,000 in a month that is not some speculative scheme. Because here's the thing, and also, the higher the return rate, the higher the risk. I'm not in Bitcoin, I'm not in the real estate world, I'm not investing in stocks at the moment because I'm focusing on my business. Because I know quite a few business owners who are wealthy. I don't know that many investors who are wealthy. And one of the things is, you should invest. You should get to a point, and let's talk about that. You should have your long-term emergency fund. You should have your short-term emergency fund, which protects your long-term emergency fund. And then you should have a family operating account. Now, a lot of people are like, what's a family operating account? Family operating account is when your bills come in, you pay them immediately versus waiting on the due date. A family operating account is two months of living expenses in a checking account so you just pay your bills as soon as you get them versus waiting until you get paid now it's going to take depending on where you are and how much money you make it could take you a year to set all this up or it can take you a few years but i'm going to tell you it's going to be well worth it because now i want you guys to understand the power of a business versus investing like I said, investing is, you know, a lot of people is like, do both. And I've had these conversations on my main channel with people and a few people, I went head to head. I was like, so you've been an investor for 15 years, but I made more money in one month than you made investing in 15 years. That's not going to really sway me to come to your side of the table. Because essentially, if you're willing to deploy the do more principle, and if you're willing to do the work, and if you're willing to get in the game, your life can be beautiful. Because I am 54 years old, and the last 20 years have been awesome. They've been great because I've been a business owner. Not ever do I wake up talking about, I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna go to work. Not ever have I had that moment because I get to do what I enjoy, and what I enjoy makes me money. And I want that for you. I want that for you. I want you to have that kind of lifestyle. So hopefully during our little chat that I've given you enough meat on the bone for you to subscribe to Savage Finance. Now let's get into the free gifts. 
One of the things that I'm gonna give you is a money management course that will teach you the five checking account blueprint. So this is the part that so many people don't do. Like these folks who made all this money doing these options trading with Wall Street bets. I guarantee you 9% of them don't have a long-term emergency fund. Uh, a lot of them don't know how to manage money, which is why they're gonna go through it. So that's the first gift. The second gift, I have an undergraduate, uh, Hustlers is H undergrad. It is an online curriculum that teaches you how to start a business versus any business from scratch. That link is below. So those are the free gifts I'm gonna give you for attending this webinar and for subscribing to Savage Finance. Hopefully you enjoyed the little chit chat. Hopefully I'll see you on the side. And if you came from this webinar and subscribed to Savage Finance, let me know in the comments that you're there and what you're enjoying the content. So with that, I will see you guys in the next one.